All right, hello there, and welcome to the final video in this series about using Omega 8 servers. This is Matt Petrowski creating videos over at Got Drupal. I'm your Got Drupal, your, addi your Drupal addicted instructor. And in this series, what I'm talking, or this video, I'm talking about just finally stuff to know about using Agar on Omega 8. The previous three videos that I shot talked about um, what you need to know how to access your sites, how to get to them, how to then migrate your sites to a new platform, how to actually create the, uh, the make file, and I didn't go in depth about a profile. You'll have to learn about setting up the profile and look at the different settings in a profile essentially running the build platform or building the platform on the command line will walk through that process and then either fail or not and you'll see what may be missing or what you need to fix. There is a little bit of trial and error there. But what I'm going to walk you through are the last final stages of my migration process when working with the sites. Now when I started I have my got Drupal which is based off of my older platform of the Drupal 6.19. I was wanting to update core as well as some modules that were security releases that needed to be fixed. So I created my own platform. Got Drupal was a default profile and I converted the Got Drupal site to a um, new profile, my own profile of Got Drupal, so that the modules are found there and Agar is able to manage them and I'm able to update them using my own version controlled make files. So one thing I wanted to show you is how do you access the information or, or how do you know that the profile has been switched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this um, seed, I'm going to go into my profile uh, or my platform of got Drupal Press Flow 624 and then I'm going to go into sites and go into test dot, uh, got Drupal LL and we're going to take a look at the settings file. So I'm going to do a cat on this and as I scroll up, what you're going to see right here is you can see that we've got the global conf, and here is where Ager is hard Ager is hard coding the install profile, and it was switched to the Got Drupal from default to Got Drupal. A lot of things on the Ager, or excuse me, on Omega 8's boxes are hard coded. This includes a lot of settings in the performance modules and other things as well all of the modules that I listed in the previous video that you don't need to include in your platform make file those modules are not automatically added to your platform I believe it's a period of about 24 hours and you need to have at least one site that exists in your um, platform so that Omega 8's automated scripts will actually look and then add all of those modules. So you're not going to find them exist there right off the bat. You can see that Omega 8 is forcibly turning on clean URLs. They're using uh, Ager, AB, uh, Ager API and they're also setting other uh, specific paths and there are also other settings that are set uh, according to scripts in other places but this settings file is actually controlled by Ager. Now in another video I'm going to talk about how you actually access the database using this information going through Chive which is provided by Omega 8 on their boxes and we'll take a look at how we access that and this is where you get access to the information directly out of the settings file and that's because the password and the database name are all controlled by Agar and generated automatically which is the reason that having access to this really doesn't do you any good because this site has been deleted and gone since the time that I shot these videos. So let's take a look at what the process uh, uh, is of actually finalizing my migration of my Got Drupal website. So as I mentioned, I have my original site, which is still live. This is something that everybody is still looking at, accessing and using. It's still based on Drupal 619, needs the module updates, has everything that it needs in order to get migrated. Test got Drupal was a clone. I cloned it into my own platform, which I had created with my make and my profile. The site is still using modules because of what I talked about, I believe, in the second video about where all of the different modules are found. So by logging into the test.got Drupal site, there are modules that Omega 8 
turns off, which you can turn back on temporarily in order to see things through the UI. There's two ways that I can find out what the status of modules are. I can find out within my Drupal site, or I can find out on the actual box itself. Now, if I was to go on the box itself, and I'm in the test.drupal site, there are some commands within Drush that Omega 8 has turned off purposefully because you're not supposed to do this on live sites. But of course, as the developer, you have to know that you're doing this as the Drupal developer and you're not working on a live site. You're either on staging or on development. Now, one of those is Drush Up. I, I don't believe it'll even work. So there you go. You're getting a forbidden syntax drush up. Now that is a normal drush command, but Omega 8 has aliased these to different commands so that you need to know them and you're not going to accidentally run them. So here in the test.drupal uh, website, I can do a drush mup. They just added an M in front of the up. And when I hit that, Let's see, uh, command PM update code needs following modules enabled to run. Update, ah, okay, so basically I need to enable the status update module. Let's go through and do that on the uh, actual site so we can see what's happening. So this is the, the way that you can see whether uh, items are updated. One of the modules that, that Omega 8 turns off is status update. It's really not needed on a live site. I'm not on a live site, I'm on a site that I created that I, is staging, so I'm going to uh, find status or update status. I'm going to enable that module and jump to the bottom and click save my configuration. And what it'll do is it'll enable that module and as it enables that module it will both become now accessible, the Drush MUP here on the uh, command line as well as within the UI in the Drupal uh, site. So as it turns on this and gets ready to show me that the module is there, I can actually click on there are security updates available for your module. So I click the see available updates and as I scroll I can see that my Drupal core was updated from 619 but I can see that I've got all these modules that need to be updated. Now a lot of these updated versions going from 1.4 to 1.6 these are updates that I put in my make file. So my, my theme, or excuse me, my profile already has these modules and their updated versions including this date security update Google Analytics image um, all the way down to views and web form now if you remember I actually needed to get rid of these modules in order to have them be updated on my site because they were part of the site folder itself so if I did a drush mup right now What's going to happen is it's using status, uh, it's using the update status and using Drush in order to do the same thing that I just did within the UI for getting a list of all of those modules that need to be updated, but it would attempt to update all of the modules that are still in my site folder. So you can see right here it's telling me that I've got a security update for views, web form, um, basically everything exactly the same that I see in the UI I'm just looking at here on the command line. Now I'm not going to update them here because they've already been updated and are part of my profile. What I need to do is I have to go into my modules folder on this particular site and I'm simply going to wipe out all of these modules with an RM, RF, and star. Nice, very dangerous command. Um, yep, I am able to do that and that's because you can see right here even the O1, even though the O1 user is the controlling user, the group is users and I did have write permission for this particular group as a uh, member of the users group, 01.ftp had access. So now if I do a listing of the directory, I can see that there are no modules left. Now what this means is that now currently in my Drupal site, because these modules were currently previously found in my site, my site specific folder, they do not exist in the site's all folder, they exist in the profiles got Drupal modules folder, Drupal is now referencing the updated modules, which means the database 
has not been updated. So I actually need to update the Got Drupal database now that I've gotten rid of these modules. And this is the same process that I would need to walk through on my gotdrupal.com site when I actually make it live. So just prior to making it live, I'm going to set it into um, maintenance mode and then go through this whole process that I've done with this test site. I'm doing it with the test site to make sure that the process is going to happen smoothly or find out what I'm going to come up against. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to a, do a drush, I believe it's db up. Um, if the normal command is up db, let's see, yep, it, there we go, I've got my warning again. The Omega 8 just created an alias for it and it is drush db up. And that's because you don't typically want to update a live database on a live site. So they've masked out that command. But I'm going to do that right now. And what we're going to see is that I got some warnings up at the very top. Let's scroll up and we can see right there, there are some modules that I did not include in my profile that I'm turning off, such as faceted search, taxonomy facets, image, PHP mailer, a lot of modules that it could not find in my profile. I don't care about those. We'll leave those warnings there. Then we get to all of our DB updates. We've got views bulk, short URL, web form, a lot of updates there, admin module, Google Analytics, so on and so forth. I'll say yes, I want to run the updates. I can scroll through all of the different uh, results. Looks like I got all successes and all of my database has been updated. So what happens is now that I've updated the actual database and got all of the successes, I can come over here on the test.gotdrupal website. I can refresh this page, go through. Looks like Webform even had an update from the time that I updated my, um, my platform. But I can see that update status is giving me a clear for all of my sites. Uh, BrowseCap had an update too and I am now fully updated. So in order to basically, and, and now that I've migrated my site from the default platform to my own profile, in order for me to, and it looks like for admin menu, I need to do some uh, flushing as well of the cache, which I believe DB uh, update does do a cache update, but you can always do a drush clear cache all and see what's going on. See if you uh, get a flush of that and then refresh your page. If not, it's probably something I just need to, to figure out. But essentially, the migration worked. Um, I got a clear database update because of all the success. It looks like this migration f of my live site to my new platform with the updated modules would happen smoothly. And now that I've made this migration onto my own profile, and I can create a new platform simply on the command line using the drush make command, and then simply migrate or clone the site in the current platform and then just migrate that site to the newer platform with the newer updates, it allows me all of the safety and security that I want that Agar is going to take care of for me. And while this may seem like a hassle and if you've managed things previously with version control uh, systems, which I have with regards to managing uh, updates and being able to roll back, there's a lot of advantages in this in that you just simply have to click these buttons and Agar is going to do a lot of these things for you. And it's going to manage these things and verify these things and make sure that things look and work okay. So in other videos where I'm talking about using Omega 8's boxes, about accessing the database and doing other things like that, I hope all of this information in this set of four videos has really helped you understand how you can make your own platform, how you go about the process of migrating your site, what the sequence of steps are, some of the snafu snafus, what the differences are with the O1 or with the root user and how Agar runs as that root user and how you run as the FTP user and have limited access, how you can manage your platforms and so on and so forth. There's one final little thing that I'm going to leave you with in terms of a tip here dealing with the Omega-8 or the Agar control panel. 
and that is when we take a look at platforms. You notice that up here at the top we have all of the platforms which are distribution uh, designators in my particular control panel. Um, we have the Hostmaster which is this actual site running on Octopus which is the um, site, in the, it's the Agar instance that also has all the shell scripts that Omega 8 is managing. Uh, for the purpose of controlling their boxes. You have all of the different platforms. Well, if you want all of your stuff to be up at the top, when you create your platforms, you can see that my testing O2 up at the top here, the way that I got this to show up at the top and push all of the rest of the stuff down at the bottom, simply adding a space. So if I go down here to find my uh, got Drupal platform, my press flow platform, if I go in here and I simply edit the Drupal record, and if I was to add a space, now don't add a space the first time you create the platform unless you're going to explicitly change the path because otherwise it'll attempt to put a, it might attempt to put a space in the path and you don't want that. But if you put a, simply put a space in the name and then save it, what you're going to have is you're going to have all of your platforms, when you take a look at the list of platforms, up at the top and right there, easy to manage. And that's just my final tip for this series on using Omega 8 boxes in order to manage your sites and platforms on Ager using Omega 8, an awesome platform provider. I'm very happy with the service they provide. Going through all the different optimizations, I, that's another video at another time. These are, these are obviously very lengthy videos, but also hopefully very helpful as well. So until next time, wishing you much luck with your own Drupal sites, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.